Hello, my Amor brothers, back again. While preparing the cuts from the movie The Dark Knight for my second part of the trilogy of The Black Pill, I had, I had anticipated only having like five segments. And in this video, there probably only will be five seconds from that movie and plus one surprise one we have at the end. But I found myself actually slicing up the movie a lot more than I actually anticipated. Because uh, I think that from a Black Pill perspective, that this movie needs to be studied a lot more. Because the, the insight you get from a Black Pill perspective is so profound. And I don't know if the script writers actually knew what they were doing and knew what they were writing. Or maybe they were reacting to cliches but a lot of the dialogue that goes on between uh, the characters especially between Batman and and the Joker go to the fundamental constructs of what we think of as morality or or society or even um, how we interact with each other good and evil whatever it goes back to the groundwork, even to the groundwork of even the creation of the universe. I don't think they intended to actually go that deep. I think they might have been just reciting truths that they have, have heard and have been passed down. But I think from a Black Pill perspective that this film needs to be really critiqued and studied. Because really there's a lot going on inside this, this particular movie. But like I said, I don't want to do the whole movie and critique it with all the different slices that I made. So I'm only going to put in five to make it short. But I may do a longer one because it I got so interested and I, there's a lot that I wanted to say that I had to like edit it, edit it down. So with that long intro, we're going to get right into it. The movie The Dark Knight, man, is, is really a black pill smorgasbord. Even from the opening scene where the Joker and his cohorts are actually robbing a mob bank. And even though we don't know the, what the Joker is about, we think it's about money. We think it's about just greed and avarice. And it's about more than that, where the participants, the crooks in this robbery are actually shooting themselves. And as you can see in the clip, even the mobster, as crooked as he is, as evil as he supposedly is, talks about honor and respect and rules that even amongst thieves, you know, say there, there's honor amongst thieves. There is a certain rule to the game, as they say in the wire, there's rules to this shit. And the Joker is dishonoring the rules because he doesn't see them as valid. Because in his mind, he's just having fun. In this clip, we see Alfred utter the phrase, some men just want to see the world burn, which is the ultimate nihilist standpoint where nothing matters and there's nothing that's real and the only thing that's left is your pleasure. And even your destruction is just another event, another sensation to feel which is why Batman doesn't understand the Joker or initially doesn't understand the Joker. Uh, black nihilism or dark nihilism is destructive. You're tearing down the rules. You're tearing down the matrix or the construction of, of humanity, the rules of humanity. And Batman is used to going outside the rules basically to reconstruct them. Which is why Alfred is saying that Batman doesn't really fully understand the Joker because other criminals are fairly simple. It's greed, it's money, it's power that they're looking for. Because they have a very concrete motivation. And the motivation for a person like the Joker or like that bandit is just good sport. Which is the opposite side of the black pill that the vigilante Bruce Wayne or Batman is on. This is the famous 
interrogation room scene from The Dark Knight, the one that everybody plays over and over again. Because this is the first face-to-face -face meeting of Batman and the Joker. The opposites actually come together for the first time. And the Joker is telling Batman about the city, about Gotham. And Batman doesn't realize that he's changed things. That's what the Joker is telling him. Because the cops and the robbers and the citizens want things to go back to the way they were. Back to the blue pill world that they understand. Regardless of what we think about the crooks, about the gangsters, they operate in the blue pill world. A world with rules is the, in the first scene that the mobster said there used to be honor and respect. And basically people obeyed the rules, the rules of the game on both sides. But the Joker is telling Batman that he's changed things. In other words, black, Batman has introduced black pill into a blue pill world and there's no going back. And the Joker being attracted to the black pill world or the black pill sentiment that Batman has imposed on Gotham has come to him because he recognizes his counterpart, his opposite. And as the interrogation goes back and forth and Batman throws him around, the Joker is basically telling him there are no rules. And the Joker wants to show Batman there are no rules. Rules are just something that people make up. Even Batman says he has one rule and Joker says to save the people that you love, you're going to have to break your one rule and you have to come into the world that, that, I, that basically you've created and I've created. The black pill world where there aren't any rules. You have to make them up as you go along. That the boundaries that we set for each other are artificial. The walls that we put up for each other are artificial. Whereas Batman wants to build them up, the Joker wants to tear them down. That's the difference between the amoral pragmatist who's trying to construct and the nihilist, the amoral nihilist that wants to tear them down. In fact, in the Matrix, Matrix movie, where the one exists in a world without rules, there's the difference between laws, laws of nature, laws of the universe, and the rules of engagement that people have constructed in our society. Morality and rules are constructs, and they've been so ingrained into our psyche that we think that they're organic, natural even. And the black pill, the Joker and Batman are proving that they're not. That's why this scene, this particular scene, touches people so much. And the Joker says, I'm just ahead of the curve. In other words, this is where humanity, in his opinion, is headed. A nihilistic society where the rules are hard and loose, and maybe a world without rules altogether, or maybe a world that needs to be reconstructed with different rules, which is what he's trying to show Gotham and what he's trying to show Batman in this particular movie. This is why Chris, Christopher Nolan's moralistic movie, moralistic play, which is basically a Greek tragedy actually wrapped up into a superhero movie, uh, haunts people. This is why the Joker's character still haunts people till this day. It makes us question our morality, our rules, our rules of engagement, our society, our social interactions. What are they really? And how can they so easily be broken by somebody throwing a monkey wrench in what we think is right and wrong? All right, this is the hospital scene. And the Joker <laughs> describes himself as a dog chasing cars. Like I said, he wouldn't know what to do with one if he caught it. And he said, like he said, he just does things. They said, does he look like somebody with a plan? In a sense, anarchist or not really anarchist, well, anarchist, depending on how you describe them, or nihilist, really don't have a plan because plans need rules. And nihilists, dark nihilists, don't have any rules. What they do is they upset them. 
As the Joker says, he ba what he does is basically turn other people's plans back in on himself. He's the monkey wrench in the machine. He's the fly in the ointment. In other words, what he's saying is Gordon, the police, the criminals, everybody has plans. In other words, they have plans, rules, or constructs to control their little world as he sees it, which is actually true. Human beings construct things to control their world, a world that they would normally wouldn't be able to control. That's what the human mind does, constructs artificial edifices, artificial things to able, be able to control its environment. That's what we call civilization or society. And as we grow up the chain, the more complex these rules, these plans have to be. And we have been socialized to accept these plans as real, even though they don't exist until we turn them into something actual. And when something happens outside of the plan, like he says, everybody loses their mind. Introduce some anarchy and you get chaos. And as the Joker says, he's a dark nihilist. He's an agent of chaos. What does he say at the end? Which a lot of people probably didn't catch. He said there's one thing about chaos is that it's bare. What does that mean? Underneath all these constructs, even the constructs that the universe is actually based on, the universal law is based on, underneath the darkness, the dark matter, that's seemingly chaos, seemingly outside of the order, it's bare. In other words, there's nothing there. Until you introduce order into it to construct what we call order, construct rules, it's bare. And that's what the Joker is trying to show Gotham or trying to prove to Gotham that who you really are at the bottom of your soul or your being is chaos, which is something Batman knows all too well. Batman is trying to hold it back. The Joker is trying to introduce it. It's funny how many lines from Jerry Maguire that the Joker actually used talking about it's a funny world that we lived in. But this is the last scene where you see the Joker and Batman are together. Now, Joker has failed to actually prove that the two ships in the harbor will actually blow each other up. In other words, in the earlier scene, he says, once you put human beings in a position where, where they have to survive, they'll eat each other. And Batman has proven him wrong. The people have proven him wrong. Batman still believes that basically people are good or worth saving. And the Joker believes the opposite. So as he tries to detonate the ships, uh, Batman throws him off the building and then saves him. And the classic line, you couldn't just let me go. We're destined to do this forever. The immovable object and the irresistible force. In other words, that signifies the uh, balance in the universe. Actually, the way creation was actually made between the immovable object, which is the noon, and the irresistible force, which is pata or the light. And together, they cause the vibration that makes what we see here is we see the visible universe. And the balance between the two, it's always there. They're both black pill. They're both co-creators. One, which is the darkness, is which is chaos, which is the which is the Joker, and then supposedly the light, which is Batman, that believes in good, that wants to construct it. The amoral pragmatist that uses the chaos to actually build the blocks of reality. And the last thing that he says, which is about Harvey Dent, which is the creation of both Batman and the Joker. The Batman, as Bruce Wayne, wanted to create a white knight instead of the dark knight. A white knight that could be the face of the light. And the Joker wants to destroy it and make Harvey Dent in his image, which is a representation of chaos 
what people are really like. And the Joker says, he brought Harvey Dent down to our level, the base level, the black pill level. He says, madness is like gravity. All it needs is a little push, a little push in the environment to bring people down to the black pill level, down to the anarchy, down to chaos. Now, this is the last scene from The Dark Knight that we're going to use. And basically, this is the last scene of the movie. Now, the Joker has drove Harvey Dent into madness. And now Harvey Dent is seeking retribution or judgment against Gordon, who he feels Gordon didn't do enough to save his people because Gordon got him wrapped up into this battle between the mobsters and the Joker. So Harvey Dent is going to exact judgment upon the Gordon's family by killing what Gordon loves most, which is his little son. And the scene that we pick up on is after the confrontation between Harvey Dent and Batman and, and Harvey Dent dies and Batman's attempt to rescue the boy, which he does. And Batman is telling Commissioner Gordon to call it in. And he takes Harvey Dent's place as Harvey Dent took his place previously in the movie. Instead of being the hero of Gotham, he's going to be the, the villain of Gotham because Gotham needs its white knight. Gotham needs a symbol to believe in. And Batman knows as a amoral pragmatist to construct what he needs to construct, he has to preserve what he tried to build, which is Harvey Dent, which is the white knight, even in his death. And to protect that image, protect people's faith he's willing to be hunted willing to be vilified because he says in the end people's faith needs to be rewarded if we're going to keep this construct this blue pill construct this faith in the system alive and together and for not to descend into the madness of the dark pill the dark pill is bare. The dark pill is empty. The dark pill is either there to destroy reality or construct reality. And here Batman is constructing reality. And at the end, the little boy is yelling to Batman to come back. And why is he running? Because he didn't do anything. And Commissioner Gordon says, Gotham has a need and Harvey Dent is the hero that Gotham needs, not the one that it deserves, which is fitting. And I have one more bonus scene from another movie because the little boy calls after Batman basically to come back that he didn't do anything. And there's a famous scene from a famous movie made 50 years earlier, and I'm sure Christopher Nolan borrowed this. The same morality play in a form of a Western, and I'm going to share it here. I got to be going on. Why, Shane? Man has to be what he is, Joey. Can't break the mold. I tried it, it didn't work for me. We want you, Shane. Joey, there's no living with, with a killing. There's no going back from one. Right and wrong, it's a brand. A brand sticks. There's no going back. Now you run on home to your mother and tell her, tell her everything's all right. And there aren't any more guns in the valley.
Okay, the clip that you saw was from the 1958 movie Shane. Now, Shane has just gone into town to where to kill Wilson, the agent of chaos that the ranchers have brought in to upset the settlers. The settlers are peaceable people that want to construct good. And the ranchers want to drive them out of town by introducing chaos. So Shane, even though the little boy's family believes that guns are bad and people that use guns are bad and gunslingers are bad, confronts uh, Wilson and kills him. Kills Wilson and his cohorts, which is against the morals of the settlers. Murder is bad. Guns are bad. That's what they came to get away from. So the little boy who admires Shane is trying to tell him to come back. But Shane tells the little boy that you have to live with a killing and he's got to accept that. So he has to go away because that killing and him being there will infect the rest of the town that he's trying to protect. And one thing that stuck with me at the ending of this, he says, good and bad is a brand which is the same thing that the Dark Knight was saying, that good and bad or the black pill, as we look at it, good and bad or good and evil is a brand. It's a construct. And sometimes to get things done, you have to go outside the construct, which is what Shane did. But Shane knew that once he went outside the construct, that he would be labeled as bad or as evil. And with that, it's something he would have to live with. So that is the reason that he had to leave, even though the little boy who calls after him, which is the most one of the most famous scenes in American history, where he calls after Shane and telling him Shane to come back. The same thing that the little boy did. Gordon's little boy. Says about Batman. Telling Batman to come back because he didn't do anything. And it's fitting that Shane is basically telling uh, the little boy in, in the movie that to go back home to his family because his father is the hero that he needs, not necessarily the one that he deserves. And everybody can't live with the black pill. Order is not the black pill. Chaos or black or the nonsensical order or where the Joker and the black Batman actually are or reside is bare and reality has to be constructed out of the bareness or out of the chaos. And that kind of realization, the kind of realization that has people losing their minds, as the Joker says, is not for everybody. And sometimes people deserve to have their faith in good rewarded, which is why Shane killed Wilson and his cohorts to take the guns out of the valley. Good people deserve to have their faith in good rewarded. And sometimes you have to go outside of the construct to fix the construct, which is the same thing that Batman did in The Dark Knight. But with that, that's all I have for this one. This is part two of the uh, Black Pill series, The Black Pill Night. I have one left, which is, goes all the way back to the Matrix, to the original Matrix. And that'll be the final in my trilogy. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this and will reflect on these themes that I put forward and maybe find further insight. But until then, this is BGS out and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.